Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the United States is sending back all immigrants except for children traveling alone. That means many will spend time at shelters in Mexico, sometimes for years. Dan Williams has the latest on our series from the U.S.-Mexico border. Pan de Vida, or Bread of Life, is a migrant shelter on the outskirts of Juarez. Less than a kilometer away is the U.S. border but many are resigned to stay here for a very long time. I meet Lydia. She left Guatemala after her family was targeted by gangs. They killed my father and my grandfather, and in October last year, my uncle was murdered. They cut their necks with a machete. Lydia says a smuggler delivered her to U.S. authorities in southern Texas a few weeks ago. American officials then put her on a plane to El Paso. From there, she says she was transferred to Juarez, Mexico, without being told what was happening. Finally, they tell us that we were on the bridge of Ciudad Juarez. Do you know where you are? No, we don't know. Well, you are back in Mexico. Look for your families and go back to your country because there is no more space for more people in our country. The border with the U.S. has been closed for a year in an effort to prevent spread of COVID-19. A public health law, Title 42, means that currently almost every migrant, other than unaccompanied minors, is deported back to Mexico. Ismael Martinez is the director of Panda Vida. He says many arrive at the shelter confused, having been told that asylum to the U.S. is an easy process. Está creciendo. Está creciendo y en verano creo que se va a poner más fuerte todavía. I think many more people will come because the people from South America are told that Title 42 is an invitation for them to come and cross. It is estimated that there are tens of thousands of asylum seekers all along the U.S. border waiting in shelters like this one. Some have been stuck here for years, unable to proceed to the U.S., but also afraid or unable to return home. Imelda is from El Salvador. She left after her brother was murdered by gangs. She arrived with her son almost two years ago. Since then, she has had a baby daughter. I lost my court date, and there is really not much hope to get into the U.S. with my son and daughter. But at the same time, I trust God that he will give me the opportunity that my file will be taken care of. But among the doom and gloom, some hope. After living in the camp for two years, this family is on its way to the U.S. to have their claim assessed, giving the rest of the camp some faith. I don't want to go back to my country. I will wait and hope to God there will be an opportunity for us. Charity organizations are working hard to provide shelter for the migrants, but there's no escaping the enormity of the ever-increasing challenge ahead. Dan Williams, CGTN. Juarez, Mexico. The United States is sending back the vast majority of migrants except for children traveling alone under a COVID-19 public health order. For more on this crisis, let's cross live to our correspondent Frank Contreras in Mexico City. Frank, tell us more about the situation at the Mexico border. Can Mexico deal with this influx of sandbag migrants? Well, this is a major question for Mexico at this very moment. Mexico is watching very closely the flow of immigrants coming in from its southern borders with Central America. We're told that since the start of the year, the Mexican government has detained at least 31,000 migrants. But of course, those are just official numbers. We're certain that there's a greater number of people who are getting by. Uh, passing through all different parts of southern Mexico on their way north to the United States. To give you an idea of what's taking place, it appears now that the administration of President Joseph Biden in the United States is in the middle of a crisis on the U.S.-Mexico border. They're reporting that in February alone, this is quite stunning, in February alone, 100,000 encounters with people trying to enter the United States without papers, undocumented immigrants trying to come across the border. 
Um, we're hearing anecdotes of people crossing the river in Texas, heading toward a small town called Roma, Texas. And we're told that uh, many of those people have uh, bracelets on their, their arms, uh, a, a yellow colored band that indicates to smugglers that these are people who are on their way to cross into the United States. The United States government reporting now that on average, every single day, 5,000 people are being uh, detained in the United States alone, 5,000, that's a huge number. Of that number, some 2,200 are single adults, so there's still a large number of single adults who are trying to make their way to the United States, and a very large number at this stage, we're told, a very large number of unaccompanied children. So this is a major concern for the United States government, concern for Central American governments, and by certainness, to absolutely here in Mexico, the government of Andres Manuel López Obrador, president of Mexico, they're in the middle of a crisis as well. Now, talking about the crisis faced by Mexico, now, is it now up to Mexico to send back all those uh, migrants back to their countries of origin? This is a very key question for Mexico. We know that a great number of people are being deported back into this country from the United States. Um, so what happens with them? A lot of them are staying in border cities in on the Mexican side of the border. There are now campments and campments set up. Um, these are places where COVID can spread very easily. So this is a very delicate situation for the people there. And then, of course, if you have underage uh, children who are still trying to get across the border, some of them are getting stuck in those detention camps. This is a very delicate situation. The Mexican government is dealing with this. Mexico itself, by the way, on its southern border is also dealing with deportations. It's detaining migrants coming in from Guatemala. These are people coming from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, and other locations. Um, and Mexico, of course, finds its detention centers now filling up now in, in the southern part of the country. So uh, Mexico is really in the middle of a very difficult situation. They're in very close contact with the Biden administration on a day-to-day -day basis as this crisis unfolds. And uh, at this stage, you know, the Mexican government is doing all it can to try to protect human rights. The Biden administration also suggests that protecting human rights is a key issue for the United States government. But they know that the, the situation now is extremely difficult with every day thousands of people heading north through Mexico. Thank you very much. Our correspondent Frank Contreras in Mexico City. You're watching The World Today on CGTN.